Savvy peace. Savvy peace. Take two. Take two. It's another opportunity for us to uh, come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In Him lies the only hope for salvation. We understand that if wait, <laughs> it is given by grace through faith. Thing out, like, put on the wall. <laughs> Where are we at? It is given by grace through faith. Yeah. It is given by grace through, no. Yes, it is. All right, where was I at before that then? We understand the uh, Sabbath peace and the most like God. We understand what that part, not to the most like God. All honor goes to the Father, through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. It is obtained by grace through faith, not yours, right? Grace by faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, you can and it, I mean, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on camera, but no... No peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is uh, repent that they might live. <laughs> Something funny you good? Yeah, my bad. You know, that, was, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we starting at today? Zakai. Isaiah 28. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 28. Can't buy good help around. Right. We'll stop touching stuff. Thank you, brother. Yeah. You know where it is downstairs? Zahar! Yeah. Go get my book from downstairs, please. Is Isaiah chapter 28. I'll start off with verse 9. You might go all play. I only walk so hard. Whom shall he teach knowledge? He said, To whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And to whom shall he make understand the doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Mm -hmm. For precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Uh huh. For with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people. Stop. So now he said, With stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll take it from there. I appreciate it. Thank you. Are you going to use them? Come on, are you pay? I don't know. Uh, with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people, right? So he's telling us that he's going to speak to us in a way that we don't understand, right? It's important that we come to the book with that, with that just acknowledged. Like, this thing is not going to be something that you just, you know, you shouldn't expect it to be something that you just look into and just like, oh, okay, everything clicks. I understand God in two days, all right? Shouldn't be anybody that can write a book for you just how to understand God in a week. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just, you know, it's just not... It's just not feasible. That's not how he set it up to be. He set it up for it to be a struggle, for it to be a straight and a narrow path. You know, so you think about a narrow path, I mean, you got to have balance. I mean, you got to have discipline. I mean, you got to just kind of get through it. It ain't going to be easy. It ain't a broad way where any way you go, it's the right way. All right? So that's what he set up. He said he would speak to his people in a, with a uh, stammering lips and another tongue. To whom he said, this is the rest, wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Mm -hmm. This is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But they would not hear. That's the important piece of it, right? And since they would not hear, watch this. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. It was all mixed up. All right, that's what he's describing. 
when you say precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here, here a little, there a little, he's talking about it's all mixed up. It's like a puzzle. You just got to kind of find it and put it together, put everything together, put this precept with that precept, right? And if you give a puzzle to a baby, it's difficult for them to understand. You give a puzzle to a young child, it's difficult for them to, to, to try to put that thing together and make a picture out of it. More likely, they're going to make a mess out of it. And that's what we see with this book. You got 33,000 different Christian denominations making a mess out of the book. You got Muslims trying to tell you the Bible says this and the Bible says that. Making a mess out of the book. Right? All these people didn't make a mess out of it. And it's all because they're trying to put puzzle pieces together that they don't understand. Most high God ain't gave it to them yet. So that's why when we go through this book, that's how we look at it. Precept upon precept. We take this little part of the book, stack it up against that part of the book, and we try to put these things together because for us, we're unraveling that puzzle. Right? That's why even when we read, we read the New Testament right now, when you look at it, you see uh, when they're talking about Yahushua, oh yeah, this represents, you know what I'm saying, and this is to fulfill this prophecy. And they take this one precept and stick it in there. They writing the precept, pre precept being written, and then they taking another precept from behind it. And really those ain't precepts, those are lines. They taking one line from here, and they sticking it while they write this other line, putting them together. Because that's how the Bible has to be understood, it's a puzzle. Right? Don't expect to just come in here, it's your first day, and you just get it. That don't make sense. Right? Not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying that if it happened, that's the exception to the rule. The rule says your butt ain't going to get it. Matter of fact, you're probably going to be frustrated. The same way you would be frustrated if somebody came up to you talking to you in a different language trying to tell you something. Same way you would be frustrated if somebody came up to you talking with a bad stutter problem trying to say something to you. You trying to get some information out of them and they just sitting there and they just won't speak English to you. Right? You trying to get that information and they just sitting there duh, 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 duh. after a while I'd be like, listen, I ain't talking to you. I can't. I can't talk to you. Right? And that's what a lot of people do with the Bible. They don't stick with it. Right? Eventually they get to a place it's just like, uh, right? We want the instant gratification. In this generation, right? That thing, got, we want something instant. I want to see it tomorrow. Right? I want to see it tomorrow. Like, what you talking about? I spent, I spent two weeks without sinning. Two weeks without sinning? I ain't seen a miracle yet. I ain't got a whole bunch of money yet. Like, God ain't did nothing for me yet. Right? And that's where we lose it. So then we start getting discouraged. Stuff start happening in life, then we start moving aside. You know what I'm saying? We lose interest, start doing other stuff. You know what I'm talking about? And that's the, that's, that's the problem. Right? It's built for, we got to be built for these struggles. We got to be built to go through it. All right, that's what we read about. Let's uh, let's talk about some people that was built to go through. This uh, we're gonna uh, pick up from uh, last week. We were talking about remember Gideon, right? Whose name was Jerob uh, Jerub uh, Jerubel. Jerubel. All right, his name was Jerubel. Right. So you got Jerubel, uh, who's also Gideon, but we'll call him Jerubel because that's the book gonna call him from here on out. Right. So you have Jerubel, who had sons. Right. Had seventy sons, I think. Right. And then of them 70 sons, he had one son named Abimelech, right? Well, we're going to pick up today and kind of read about his son, Abimelech. So this is, uh, this is uh, Judges chapter 9, verse 1. We read all the way to 8 last week? Yeah, yeah, we about finished three. 8. We finished 8. So we left off at Judges 9, 3. Not three, okay. So this is Judges chapter 9, verse 1. And, the, and Abimelech, the son of Jerubbaal, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren, and continued with them, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem. Mm -hmm. Which is better for you? He said, which is better for you? Either that all the sons of Jerubbaal, which are three score and ten sons, reign over you, mm -hmm. or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. Right? So he asked him a question. He's like, look, I got 70 brothers. Right? 70 brothers. Almost all of us got different mamas. But my mama is y'all kin. All they mamas, they, you know, different parts of town, different nations, all this stuff, who knows? But my mama is related to y'all, which means I'm related to y'all. So now I'm a son of Jer, Jer, uh, Jer, 
What's it? Jeru Bell. Right? I'm a son of Jeru Bell. Why don't it sound feel right? Jeru Bell. Jeru Bell. Right? I'm a son of Jeru Bell. Call him Gideon, man. Yeah. I'm a son of Gideon. Anyway. Right? And if I'm a son of Gideon, that means that the people going to want me to rule over them. Listen. I'm also a son of your people. That's an advantage. I, you know, that's an advantage I have that the rest of my brothers don't have. So let me ask you a question. Do you want somebody that's completely unrelated to you ruling over you? Because one of, for sure, one of Gideon's sons is going to rule, is what they're trying to say. Right? So it can either be me, or it could be one of these guys that's not related to y'all at all. Y'all choose. All right? Watch what the people say. And his mother's brother and spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech. Mm -hmm. For they said, He is our brother. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Berith, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. Right, so they gave him a little bit of money. And after that, he hired some he hired some hitters. You know what I'm saying? He hired some people to kind of, you know what I'm saying, run around with him, take care of business with him. Right? Let's see. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah, uh -huh. and slew his brother and the sons of Jerubbaal, being threescore and ten persons, upon one stone. Right. So he took all his, all of his vain people, and he went to his uh, father's house where all his brothers were, killed them all, killed them all on one stone. So he already had this planned out. He knew he was like, all my brothers gonna be. This is how I look at it. All my brothers gonna be. You know what I'm saying? They gonna be in one place. Let me talk to my people, you know what I'm saying? What y'all want, you know what I'm saying? Y'all want my opportunity. Y'all gonna help me do this or not? They gave him the money to get the hit. So he said, okay, y'all come with me and we're gonna take all these boys out. So he took them all out at once, right? But let's see who he left. Notwithstanding, yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubael, was mm. left, for he hid himself. The youngest son, no, he hid. All right? He didn't get the youngest son. Let's see what happened next. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, and all the house of uh, and all the house of Milo mm -hmm. and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. All right, so they made him king. They made Abimelech king at this point. All the sons are dead. It's only one left, as far as they know. All right, so they say, you know what? Now you the king. Let's hear about it. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood on the top of the Mount Gerizim. All right, so this is his little brother. When his little brother heard about it, he went and stood on top of the mount. Watch this. And lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Uh huh. Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. Mm hmm. The trees went forth on a time to give them a parable over them. Right? So this is a parable. He said the trees went forth. What happened? On a time to anoint the king over them. Mm hmm. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. Mm hmm. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith be me? They honor God and man. Right. With by me, they honor God and man. So you have an olive tree, and he said the olive tree is good for God and good to man. He said, Should I leave that just to rule over some trees? I said, No, I don't think so. Right? Let's hear about the, the next tree. And go to be promoted over the trees. Mm -hmm. And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. Mm -hmm. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and to go be promoted over the trees? Right? It's, uh, the fig tree was like, I don't think that makes sense. Right? Let's hear about it. Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. Mm -hmm. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheers God and man, mm -hmm. and go to be promoted over the trees? Mm -hmm. Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. Mm -hmm. And the bram bramble said unto the trees, If in truth you anoint me, Bramble is, uh, bramble is like a, yeah, like a tumbleweed. You know what I'm saying? Like a tumbleweed, like a, like a, like a thorny bush. You know right? So it said the bramble is looking like what? If in truth you anoint me king over you, then then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Right? The bramble said it's going to turn against you. But let's hear about it. Now, therefore, if you have done truly and sincerely. Right? So he gave him that parable. And now he's telling him, he's like, now, therefore, now that you heard that, if you've done truly and sincerely, Keep going. And that you have made Abimelech king. Uh huh. And if you have dealt well with Jerubbaal in his house, uh huh. And have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you and advent and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian, and ye are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, seventy persons. Right. Upon one stone. 
He hath made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king over the men of Shechem, mm -hmm. because he is your brother. He said, he said, that boy mama was just a maidservant, right? He threw his mama out there, he was like, his mama is just a maidservant. All right, keep going. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbaal and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. Mm -hmm. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of the men of Shechem in the house of Milo. And right. Let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. So he basically was laying it out to him like, if what y'all did was right and it was honest and it was just, then enjoy him. Enjoy him as king. But if that thing wasn't right and it wasn't honest and it wasn't just, then that thing gonna destroy everybody because of what y'all did. Right? Watch this. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer mm -hmm. and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech his brother. Mm -hmm. And when Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel. How many years? Three years over Israel. So you see, some time went past. Right? Jotham talking all this mess. Like if it wasn't right. You know what I mean? You gonna, uh, you know what I'm saying? Fire gonna come out. Everything gonna be ruined if it wasn't right. He just running them out. Three old years went by. How you think? How you think? Uh, Beam like feeling? This is wonderful. What you talking about? My little brother talking mess. That's but high. He know how I get him. Right? Everything going smooth for him. Three years go past. Let's hear about it. Then God sent an evil spirit. God sent him. what now? An evil spirit. Why gotta wait three years to send the evil spirit? Mm, gotta make sure the guard was let down. Mm. Right? Let's hear about it. And he God said the evil said, spirit. An evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Mm -hmm. That the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubbaal might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them. Right? And upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brother. So now everything kind of flipped around. Now his own people turned on him. The same ones that turned on, on the sons of Gideon, now they turned on him. Right? And it all started off with God sending what? The evil spirit. That's why we better watch out. Sometimes we be thinking stuff, you know what I'm saying? It seems like stuff just falling apart, stuff just going wrong. And we blame that thing on the devil. Right. You know what I'm saying? Most like God said, he sent the evil spirit. Right? Grab uh, grab 1 John chapter 4. It's 1 John chapter 4. Give me verse 1. All right, we real quick to blame stuff on the devil. All right, the devil just trying to block my blessing. Okay. So I'm trying to block something, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's a blessing that's getting blocked off. What can't he be blamed for? The devil? Nothing. The devil no. is in the wrong context about it? Yeah, just about. Well, so it's not, it's not, so it's not even that he can't be blamed for this stuff. It's just that. What people do now, that's a good question actually. What people do now is they separate, they, they, they separate God and the devil, right? They think, oh, devil evil fighting against God, and then God is struggling against the devil. Right. Instead of seeing it as, well, yeah, the devil did it because the devil is there to do God's dirty work, right? And when you see it like that, it kind of changes how you look at it. It's like, okay, so the, God, God put the devil there, just like he put this evil spirit here right. to mess some stuff up. Who gonna come out on top after he throw that wrench in the plant? Right? And those who serve him. So the devil, the devil is only there to agitate. Right? right? He there, he there to kind of make a little mess, just like we read in Job, right? right? He there to kind of make a little mess of things just to see who gonna fight through it. That's why he said, I'm gonna separate, separate the sheep from the goats. You know, just divide the righteous from the wicked. So the devil is just here to like prove who's wicked. Yeah. So God, it's like he's basically like he said. He's just doing God's dirty work. So God, to God, it ain't nothing. It's like, okay, those are all the children of the devil. These are all mine. Come, my people and children of the devil, y'all get out of here. So it's just basically, you know, he's just there to, like, make that dividing line. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't even acknowledge the devil. Right. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember the last time I said the devil this or the devil yeah, that. Like, why? We don't acknowledge him. He's doing the job. He ain't got time for that. Right. He said, I'm "I make." For it. He said, "I make." He said, uh, "I kill and I make alive." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I make good and I make evil. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm talking about knowledge of the devil when I see these people worshiping the devils. Right. All right, when they worshiping these demons, when they got you know what I'm saying, they got these little, got these little necklaces on. You know what I'm saying? With the little women, you know what I'm saying? The women, if you knew all the weird shapes and all that stuff, like yeah, okay, 
I acknowledge some devil then. You know what I'm saying? That's a demon right there on your chest. You know what I'm saying? You got that there. I acknowledge that. They got them little crystals. You know what I'm saying? You know how they be wearing them crystals. Yeah. Hanging the crystal. They got them, uh, what they call them? What's them thing called? What's them thing called? The what? people be having. They put them outside their door. All the little, uh, dream catchers or whatever? Dream catchers. That's what I was trying to think of. They got them dream catchers, all that stuff. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? You reading your darn horoscopes, you know what I'm saying? All Sagittarius seeds. Okay. Yeah, I acknowledge the devil at that point. But when it comes to like some bad stuff happening in my life, you know who I'm turning to? <laughs> Most I die. What I look like? I'm going to spend the rest of my day arguing with the devil? Why? All right, something bad happened to you. It hurt. It sucks. Right. I really don't like it. Devil, I can't believe you. That's how I'm going to get what I need. When's the last time the devil said, okay, okay, okay? When's the last time we read anything, somebody yelled at the devil, and he just backed off like, all right, my bad. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Please, you better turn to the most high God. If, that, if something's going to change, you better turn to the most high God. Yeah, but like, not today, Satan, or not today, devil, or the devil trying hard today. Even when you look at the book, right? The only person you see communicating with the devil is Yahweh Shua. He the only one, Satan get behind me. Yeah. He the only one, come out of her. Talking to him. They said, we ready? You know what I'm saying? They say, who is this man that even the demons obey him? They know who the man is? What you talking about? Yeah, yeah. When, the, when the most high God say, send it. Give me an evil spirit. Go get his butt. The demons got to obey the man. So when the man come in the flesh, what you think going to happen? You think Peter going to walk up to him and be like, not unless he give him the power to. That's why, that's why when we read, uh, where we read that at? Matthew. I mean, we in Mark now, right? In Mark right now. But in Matthew, I think it was Matthew chapter 10, that's why we read, it said that he gave the power. He said he called the 12 and he gave them the power to cast out demons. Yeah, yeah. You think anybody was casting out demons before that? No. Anybody have no conversation with no darn demon? Boy, to light your butt up. You see what happened with Paul? Oh, see, y'all got me off on a tangent. Grab, uh, what is that? Acts, uh. What is that? Acts, uh... Is it, would it be after 15? Let me see. Yeah, it's probably like Acts 18. It ain't 18, no. Dan, you do me a favor. Look it up for me. Did you want to get 1 John real quick? I want 1 John chapter 4. Dan, you can look this up for me. Look up. Look up. Look up. Look up. What is it? Look up. Paul. Is that Paul Peter Castle. we know and Paul we know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, wasn't that, we just read that, didn't we? No, no, that's an act. I know I read that, right? But look at uh, Peter we know and Paul we know. Jesus we know. Isn't it Jesus we know? Yeah, I'm sure we know. Paul we know. But who we're getting asked about who are you, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're getting asked about. Yeah, that's what we're getting asked about. This is 1 John chapter 4. Give me verse 1. Anything in there? You should be able to just Google it. Yeah. Beloved, believe not every spirit. He said what? Believe not every spirit. He said, beloved, believe not. Go ahead and look it up. You know what I'm saying? He said, beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits. He said, but do what them. to them? Try the spirits. What does that mean when he said try them? Yes. So what I look like Ooh. every time something happened to me, right? I'm just automatically thinking it's the devil. You better test them darn spirits. Same way, same way it works on the flip side. What it look like every time a pastor pray over me, mm -hmm. right? Every time I go into church and I hear that organ playing, what I look like this is the, this is the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like this is the Holy Spirit that don't fill us. I don't know. Acts 19. You better test them thing. This is Acts chapter 19. Watch this. He said, you better test them. Matter of fact, before we go there, keep going right here for me. What's the next verse? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Mm -hmm. Hereby ye know. False prophet is a liar. People these people lying on their book. And they're not, they not telling flat lies. Same thing that you see today. TDJ, you never gonna turn on the TDJ sermon and just see a flat lie. You're just gonna see emptiness. That's all. It's just empty. He's not telling you anything. That's how a good liar gonna do it. I'm not saying nothing. I'm just giving you a whole bunch of praise gods and God's one. And when you break down the technicalities of what I'm saying, technically, I'm not lying. Right? That's the only way you could do it. 
But at the end of the day, I haven't showed you nothing. I haven't taught you nothing. When you walk away, you don't know the Bible any better than you knew it when you walked in. But you feel motivated. You feel good about yourself. How long does that last? To the next time you sin? Next time you do something that make you feel guilty? Then you got to come back? Get this man some more of your money? Right? It's a cycle. Everything's going to be a cycle. Right? You can have righteousness and still feel bad. That ain't going to go away. Right? You can you can not sin. You can quit sin all, and you still going to feel. I can give you all through this book. It's righteous men that felt bad. That was depressed. That was looking at it looking like, God, why do the sinners prosper? How do you think Jeremiah was feeling? He's in there doing the work of the God as a righteous man, getting chased down, people trying to get rid of him. He's trying to tell the people, look, this is what God told me to tell y'all. It's not like I'm just out here, like God told me to tell y'all, just give up and go to Babylon. You know what the people say to him? Nah, you, you got to go to jail. Because we about to go to war and you telling all the soldiers that they need to just give up. How am I being supposed to fight a war if you telling them that we can't win and God already against us? You can see it from both sides. Well, like you defected to the Babylonians. Yeah, you a traitor. No, I'm not. Right. How are you not going to be a traitor if we about to go to war with Babylon and you talking about, no, we should just give up and enter, our, just give ourselves into slavery? Are you stupid? That's what we look. That's how we looked at Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is just walking around like, man, God is to listen. God is telling me to tell you this. It's not like I just came up with something. It's not like I'm just saying it. I'm trying to tell you like, this is how it works. How do you think that feel when you got your brother, people you love, just reject you? You think they ain't feel good? No. They ain't feel terrible. So, so I'm not saying that, you know what, if you live righteous, everything just going to be peachy. That's not the promise of the book. You have peace within once you come to that understanding. But until you come to that, that pure understanding, the whole time you're struggling. That thing going to hurt. That thing going to suck. You're not going to like it. going to be frustrating. going to be depressing. Right? Same way the other end. You know what I'm saying? You can go to church and hypocrite for the rest of your life. And it's going to feel good. And it's going to hurt. And it's going to feel good. And it's going to hurt. So you still going to have the cycles. You, either way, you're going to have the cycles. It's just one way. At the end of it, you're going to see life. The other way, at the end of it, your butt gone. I think they think I'm depressed at work. Right? You probably do. <laughs> it's a depressing thing. See people live their life like it ain't no God. I think it's depressing, right? What we got? Acts 19. This is Acts chapter 19. What verse I want? Uh, uh, 15. This is Acts chapter 19. Give me verse 15. Acts chapter 19, verse 15. Let's see what it says. Go up. What you looking? Do 11. 11. So this is Acts chapter 15, verse 11. This is Acts chapter 15, verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick, were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs of, or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Right? This is, where these, this is where these lying preachers on TV get this stuff from. Mm -hmm. Where they send you personal prayer packages. You know what I'm saying? And you got, you know what I'm saying? You got this, it come with a little handkerchief in it. You just, you know, you just lay this on the sick person you know, and this, that, and other, and they'll be here. This is where they get it from. Making a mockery of God. This ain't no regular man that was doing this stuff. It ain't like, ain't like anybody that just wake up and just, you know what I'm saying, that stuff is going to happen. This is a disciple of the Most High God. And not just any disciple of the Most This is an apostle of the Most High God. In a sense. Specific. What you mean? Met the man face to face. Man appeared to him and was like, man, why are you kicking against me? Why are you kicking against the goals? He ain't never had the Most High God show up to you and have, take the time out of his darn day to specifically say, after you done just ran through some of his people, Specifically say, why are you kicking against the goals? Let me go ahead and blind your butt real quick. In a few days, you're going to hear from a man named Ananias. He'll take care of you. Ananias baptized him. Ananias put him under the water. You know what I'm saying? He said, the eye, his eye cleared up like scale. He's like, scale fell off his darn eye. And after that, now he can see. And from that point, the man hit the ground running, working for God. Most of God already know your butt wouldn't hit the ground running. That's why he ain't even going to waste no time. 
This ain't no regular man. Everybody just acting like ain't none of these crooked pastors. Paul wasn't selling no. You what did Paul look like selling a darn handkerchief to somebody? No, you put this. You know what I'm saying? Just give me a little bit. Just put. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you feel is right. Just put it in my hand. You know that's how he tried to get you. Whatever you feel is right. <laughs> Cut that out. I'm telling you what I feel is right. Punch you in your darn mouth. You lucky the Most High God say this. This is uh, what is this? Well, verse twelve. This is verse twelve. This is Acts chapter nineteen, verse twelve. Let me hear what the book say. And God wrought like so that from His body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Uh huh. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Yahushua, saying. We adjure you by Yahshua, whom Paul preaches. Uh huh. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, mm -hmm. a Jew, and the chief of the priests, which did also. Mm hmm. And the evil spirit answered and said, Yahshua. The evil spirit I know. did what? He answered and said, Yahshua, I know. You running your mouth to something you don't know nothing about. Evil spirit answered back and said, What? Yahshua, I know. Uh huh. And Paul, I know. Uh huh. But who are you? Get your darn butt out of here. What did it do after that? Let, let me see. Let me see how I looked at him and was like, okay, my bad though. I didn't know you was who you was. Let me go ahead and go somewhere else. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on was leaped on. Wait. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Now let's put this in a different perspective. All right? So look, this is what just happened. You have somebody who's trying to do what Paul does. They see Paul sending demons out of people. So this man is like, okay, well, you know what? We gonna go and we gonna try to do the same thing. In the name of Yahushua, who Paul preached. Come out of him, right? So they talk to this demon, to this spirit, and the spirit responded to them was like, I don't know you. And they got on them and took them over, right? So let's just say in these churches, who knows, but let's just say in these churches, there's some evil spirits. That people happen to think is the spirit of God. Right? And you had these pastors casting out demons and giving people holy spirits and all that. You don't think these spirits are jumping all over everybody? Oh, well, it's true because I, um, I don't know about it, but my grandma was saying that stuff happened to her. Not to her specifically, but she said she was in the, uh, the church at one point and they cast one out, but they jumped jump to another person. I didn't heard about plenty of stories at church. Crazy. Crazy stuff they see. I believe every word. At first, I didn't believe that though. I believe every darn word now. Every darn word. They playing with stuff they don't know no business about. They just sitting there just playing with stuff. Right. Talking to stuff. Rebuking demons. I rebuke that devil. I rebuke that sickness out of you. I rebuke. Okay. You get to run in your mouth. It's one thing to make a request to God. It's one thing to say, God, I pray that you heal my sister, my brother. God, rebuke this demon out of there. God, do this. Right? Even the angel, the angel said when Satan was fighting over the body of Moses, right? Even the angels didn't say, rebuke Satan. They said, the Lord rebuke you. They said, Lord, you get him. <laughs> Even the angels got more respect. Now, these people directly talking to sicknesses, directly talking to demons and spirits, and they feel like, oh, no, that's how you're supposed to do it? When we look in the book, when people directly doing that stuff and they ain't got the authority to do it, that thing jump on them. That's what Jude was talking about. Okay. Yeah, what are you talking about? Jude and Peter. All right? These people don't know. They talking about stuff they have no idea about. They haven't opened up this book. They haven't studied it. They just blend through, see something they like, and like, ooh, I like that. Ooh, let me save that verse. Let me memorize that one. Stuff gonna get these people messed up. It already has. That's why we that's why we where we are. Right? Let's go ahead and get back to the uh, you know what I'm saying? This is uh Thessal Second Thessalonians chapter two. It's second Thessalonians chapter two. Give me verse five. Let me try to shoot through this. Do that black boy. That daddy black boy, look at them knees. Mmm. And them black knees. Mm. 
Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. In the room. Wait, you said two, verse five? Okay. This is uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Mm -hmm. And now ye know what withholds that he might be revealed in his time. Mm -hmm. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. He said the mystery of iniquity is already at work. He said that thing's already happened. Let's hear about it. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay. And then shall the wicked be revealed, mm -hmm. whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Mm -hmm. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So Satan is going to have all power and all signs and lying wonders. So you remember last week we were talking about the Jews seek a sign. And you remember we were talking about was it last week or the week before? But we were talking about Eli, how right now snap. we are in a position where we have to kind of just believe off of the word. Right. right? We can't just believe based off of just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Somebody walking on water. Ooh. Right? We got to believe because like the word said it. And then we got to believe it. Like, because the word, that's how the word say. And this is what the word describes as a righteous person. This, that, and other. So we got to believe based off of what the word say. There may be a reason for that. Right? I mean, it may just be a reason why the Most High God is setting it up. Last week, we kind of talked about that. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is just the time that the Most High God is. He has us in a place where, like, our eyes are darkened as a punishment. And that's true. But you've seen a lot of punishments work out for our benefit at the same time. Right? Even the punishment, even in that punishment, it set us up for the next thing. You know what I'm saying? That thing work out for us real nice. You know what I'm saying? So if you think about it, if the devil is going to have all signs and powers and be able to do all these wonders, all these lying wonders, but we're trained now to not look at signs because we never had them anyway. Now what we operate off of is strictly the word. When we see that sign happen, although it'd be amazing to everybody else who ain't based off of the word, and it'd be amazing to us too. When we look at it, we'd be like, but something's not right here because he's a sinner. I mean, sure, no, no, he, no, he just, no, he definitely raised somebody from the dead, and that was real, but they're sinning, like, that's not of God, like, he has a cross on his neck, like, I don't care, I, listen, at the end of the day, that's an idol, right, so it, it arms us to be able to say, okay, glitz and glamour, all that's nice, but at the same time, I need to see the book at work, right, right, so that could be a benefit that comes out of this time that we're in where we kind of just have to focus in on the word. Huh? Won't be able to get tricked. Let's keep reading. Watch this. Let's see what he's going to do. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, mm -hmm. because they receive not the love of the truth, uh -huh. that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Who's going to send it? God. Let's hear, let's hear how the devil is about to send strong delusion on people and start lying to them. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That it's they God who's sending the evil spirit. It's God who's sending the strong delusion. Right? Now, it comes by way of demons and evil right. spirits and devils. Yeah. Right? But at the end of the day, who calls that shot? Ain't nothing moving without God signing off. What do you think is happening without God signing off? Nothing's going to move. Right? We look at it. That thing going to happen exactly how you want it to happen. Your choice is what side you going to jump on. It's like how can like Satan do anything messed up right. without God saying it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like people think, like he was saying, like Satan and God's fighting against each other. That's yeah, like God's, God's like, oh, I'm going to get you this time. Right. That was a good one. You know like, what I'm saying? Oh, no, Satan, don't kill that person. Uh, That's how they try to do it. Look at you know, they try, they try to soften up the land. Well, God, you know, God just allowed that to happen. God didn't just allow that to happen. You know what I'm saying? God signed off. God said, yo, yeah, do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get him. And it sucks. Like, I'm not, not to make light, because yeah. some of this stuff is tragedy and this sucks. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it, we have to put it in perspective. Because if we, if, we, if we try to make ourselves feel better with a lie, that is what we just read. Right? There's love and truth. No matter how much it hurt. No matter how much it goes, there's love and truth. Now, you can also use half-truth uh, deceitfully, right? 
one hundred percent, right? You can also use it half, you know, what I'm saying deceitfully. But there's love in the truth, the pure truth, the whole truth, giving to making somebody completely informed, giving them all sides of it, making sure they know everything that's going on. There's love in that, right? But people don't want that because when you take that love, that thing gonna make you uncomfortable if you got lies. That's the only thing. If a person only only knew truth. It was only true. And you told them the truth, oh, that thing don't affect them one bit. It's all, oh, thanks, good looking. But for us, we are filled with lies. We've been taught lies from our birth, right? So then when somebody come through and try to tell us the truth, now we got to deal with that lie. So now this truth comes in, it contradicts what my mama told me, what my great-grandma told me. I love her. You trying to say my great-grandma lied to me? That's the part that hurts us. We have where are, are, are the things that we believe are attached to stuff that we care about. So if you take this out of the way, that means I got to move this, which means I got to move this. And so now I'm rearranging my entire life, the way I look at things, the way I do things. And then on top of all that, it's just difficult. If I've trained my mind to look at things a certain way, it's just a habit. I don't even think about it. Right. It's like it's like, you know, what I'm saying, what's your name? What's a habit you got? Not necessarily a bad habit, just a habit. You know, what I'm saying? anything you do. You know what I'm saying? Anybody bite their nails? Yeah, sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You bite your nails, right? Yeah. So you bite your nails, it's that nothing. Now, if somebody came to you tomorrow, like, it's a sin to bite your nails. And that thing was true. Like, aside from, aside from you just wanting to be evil or anything like that, you just, I mean, naturally, whenever I sit down on the couch after a long, hard day at work, I don't even think about it. I just find my finger in my mouth and I'm biting it. Yeah, before you know it, it's just like... So then now I got to, like, oh, now I feel guilty. Dang it. I gotta stop doing it. And that's how sin is. That's how all this stuff is. So that's the part that hurts us. Cause it's like this is a habit for me. It's not like, it's not like I'm just trying, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm used to doing these things and now I just found out I really can't do it no more. So aside, like I really want to be righteous. I really want to be good. But sometimes this stuff just happened without me even thinking about it. And I'm like, dang it. Like, how do I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's the part that hurts us. That's the part that makes it frustrating for us. That's the part that's like. You know what? This is too much, so it can't be real. I can't know. It's impossible to stop sin. That's the part that makes us feel like that. Because we go through a moment or moments of just like, I just can't get over it. So just take time. And just take this. this one. Right? And I ain't saying like it take time. Like, oh, well, you know, just keep doing the same thing. No. Make yourself stop today. Right? But if you mess up today, make yourself stop later on today. And if you mess up later on, all right. Make yourself stop tomorrow if you wake up. Stop. Your whole goal just got to be stopped, period. Right? It's important that we know this. It's important that we look at this stuff and we understand it because people will tell us a lie and we will accept it because the lie sounds better. It sounds better, right? And that's how lies work. You can see it all over the news. That's how these people get you every time on the news. You see them telling some wild lies. Right? Wow. Right? Y'all don't think it, they just, the CIA, CIA just released, you know what I'm saying? Y'all hear about the, the journalist that died in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. I mean, not in Saudi Arabia, uh, but in uh, Turkey. No. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I pay, I try to pay attention. Anything that happened in Turkey, I pay attention to. Because I know Turkey is where the Bible say the seed of the devil is. Right? A lot of people don't even think about Turkey. A lot of people thinking about, oh, it's the, the fake Jews, and they think about these people, and they think about those people. I'm looking at, the Bible clearly says the seat of the devil is right here. You know what I'm saying? Revelation talked directly about the seat of the devil in multiple places. So, that's what I'm looking at. Daniel told us that the the uh, the, uh, the goat is y Yvonne, and he gonna have a horn that comes up in the latter days. And that horn is gonna go to the beautiful land. I'm talking about our land. So I know, and if you look at Yavon, people translate that as Greece. But if you look at most of Greece, it was in what Turkey is now. Right? So all that stuff, I'm paying attention to Turkey. So anything you have in Turkey, I'm like, look, look, come across my phone, talking about Turkey says Saudi Arabia had a person killed in Turkey, in the uh, Turkish, on the Turkish embassy or whatever. All right? So Saudi Arabia, you know what I'm saying, apparently has some people killed. So it's been this big thing. Trump don't want to, you know what I mean? Trump just taking it easy because he got he got business to do with Saudi Arabia, just like any president that ever came from America. So he got, you know what I'm saying? He got business to do with him. So he's not like, well, let's not blame him too quickly. You know what I'm saying? Let's slow down. Let's take our time with this. Make sure 
Make sure we get all the facts. So then, right before, you know what I'm saying, stuff starting to simmer down and all that stuff, and uh, right before an announcement is about to be made, you know what I'm saying, the CIA come out and say, CIA, had, or not, well, the CIA didn't really come out. A report of unnamed sources who says they heard from the CIA that there's a report that they proved that Saudi Arabia is responsible for what Trump did. Right? I mean, uh, responsible for, uh, for, for that man dying. So now, how convenient. Right? Because right now, there's a lot of people in the country who want to hear Trump is wrong, who want to hear Trump is, is, is lying, Trump is, is uh, compromised by a different nation. They want to hear that. So now, whoever leaked that report, whether it really is the CIA or not, whoever leaked that, leaked that report is given something that the people want to hear, right? And then that helps them control the narrative. Now, I'm not taking no side on that. Ooh, no, they all probably lying. Ooh, cool. you know what I'm saying? That's beside the point. I'm just saying that you see you put out a lie and people buy it hook, line, and sinker, right? Another thing that came out, Hillary Clinton, right? Hillary Clinton, when Trump was running, Trump was like, we need to build a wall. We need to stop bringing in illegal immigrants and all this, right? She's against it. We need to give illegal immigrants a path to citizenship, right? That was her thing. Make them all citizens. Trump is like, kick their butt out and build a wall. Don't let nobody else in, right? But now... Huh! But now... You look at it, and she talking about the Europeans. The Europeans got an immigration problem, too. It's a whole bunch of, we've been throwing all them bombs in Syria, so the people in Syria, they got to leave Syria, and they come all to these European states, right? So they come all these Europeans, and so Hillary Clinton comments on Monet's situation. And she says, you know what? They're not going to get over their situation until they stop allowing immigrants to come in. They have to turn away these immigrants and make a hard stand, and it's not that nobody wants to do it, but... For the sake of their country, they have to do it. Otherwise, the country is going to crash. So it's like, how convenient is that? How convenient is that? But you can tell a lie, and when it's like, hey, everybody wants to hate Trump, well, let me just say something that's opposite of what he's saying. Because that's what people want to hear. All right? That's what we're up against. We're not up against these, these flat-out lies, where it's just like, oh, easily, okay, I can prove that and debunk that. And we're not up against that. All right? We up against subtle lies. So much so that the, the, the that people use the truth. Another example. You have white people who now putting in, that, like they always told us in school, Africans sold Africans. That's true. That's a fact. Africans sold other Africans into slavery. That's a fact. But by omission of other facts, that leaves us in the space where we're like, oh, white people ain't really even to blame for what happened to us. We should be mad at ourselves. So it leads more into this self-hate that they built into it. Right? But that's just by omission of truth, omission of facts. And that's the strong delusion that we deal with. That's the form that this stuff comes in. That's what we have to arm ourselves with. We have to have enough information. When people say stuff, we can be like, yeah, true, Africans sold other Africans. But that's like me saying... World War Three was Europeans fighting other Europeans. Like, sure, that's that's true, but that doesn't give us any deep. That doesn't tell us anything, right? That's like okay. That's like saying World War Two is the world fighting the world. Like, there's a lot of people in the world. Like, human. All it really is is human beings fighting other human beings, right? Sure. I mean, we can lift that thing at the highest level possible, but does that give us the detail that helps us? Well, no. Let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about who so who. Let's talk about who were the Africans? What tribes were they from? What nations? What religion did they have? What would they go? Did they randomly pick Africans or did they pick a specific group? Once they picked that specific group, did they sell them to Europeans? Or did the Europeans say, hey, you know what I mean? Go get them. Like, how did it work out? Give me the details. You know what I'm saying? I need to know how it worked out. Otherwise, I'm not armed with truth. Right? This is what we up against. Everything else is a strong delusion. Where we at?
good. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but uh -huh. have pleasure in unrighteousness. They have what? Pleasure in unrighteousness. They have what? Pleasure in unrighteousness. And that's where it gets us. It's about being in joy, like enjoying where you are. Right? Right? It ain't like it ain't like I'm just like, okay, I'm sinning and I'm frustrated and I'm upset. That's one thing. Either way you sin it, you're going to hell. Don't like there's some people that teach, I mean, as long as you as long as your soul is bothered by the fact that you sin, that's how you know you got the spirit of God in you. That's a lie. You sin, you're going to hell. I don't care how you feel about it, you're going to hell. But if you sin and you're fine with it, like this is like I'm living, you know, they I'm living my best life. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? If your butt taking shots, you know what I'm saying, getting turned up, doing all the stuff they do, and you talking about you living your best life, oh, that's a problem. Cause now you you are ple you have pleasure in unrighteousness. It's not like it's not like this is not like like you you not conflicted. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even got no path. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't got nowhere to go. You just like now nah, this is where I want to be. That's a problem, right? Romans, give me uh, Romans chapter one. Let me try to shoot through the. Let me get Romans chapter 1, uh, jump on down to verse 18. Right, Zakai? Come here. Get your butt over here, boy. Why are you doing all this crying? Look at me. Look at me. Why are you doing all this crying? You gotta stop all that crying, you hear me? Over there, have a seat. Come here. That ain't why. It is why. My It's Romans chapter 1, give me verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There you go. So the what of God? The wrath of God. Sound like a mad person. Right? God is angry. He is going to be revealed against all people who hold the truth in un unrighteousness. That means I know I know what's going on, but mm, I have pleasure in what I'm doing. Right? Keep going. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. Uh -huh. For God has shown it unto them. Mm -hmm. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Mm -hmm. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, mm -hmm. but became vain in their Im imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Mm -hmm. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, mm -hmm. and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, mm -hmm. and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Mm -hmm. That's why God also gave them up to uncleanness. He the what? Rest. Gave them up to uncleanness. That's what we got to avoid. Their own hearts. Most high God said he gave them up to uncleanness and gave them up to the light. In other words, you good. You do what you got to do. You do what you, you know what I'm saying? You good. I ain't after you, you know what I'm saying? You good. Do what you need to do. Have fun. Have at it. Have a blast. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Mm -hmm. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Mm -hmm. Who was blessed forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. He gave them again, right? He gave them up unto vile affections. Right? Grab uh, Ezekiel chapter 9 real quick. It's Ezekiel chapter 9. We're going to start at verse 1. Right, Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 1. All right, it's one thing to have pleasure in unrighteousness. It's another thing to have displeasure in it. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 9, sorry. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 1. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Uh oh. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lies toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. Mm -hmm. And one man among them was clothed with white linen, 
with linen. So mm -hmm. he clothed with linen, mm -hmm. with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. Mm -hmm. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn in his side. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city. He said, Go through the midst of the city. Through the midst of Jerusalem. Uh huh. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He said, Put a mark on the forehead of everybody who does what? Sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. People that sad. Right? The people that sad because they 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 around all this iniquity and everybody who's sinning. The people that frustrated, they cry and they sigh. What's a sigh? The people who do that? Right? People are sitting there like, oh my gosh, I just wish that this wasn't just like. The people who are sitting there crying and sighing, they upset it, but they're bothered by all these people around in the city. Oh yeah, put a mark on them. What else going on? And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh, and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of the uh, midst thereof. Mm -hmm. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Mm -hmm. Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women. Mm -hmm. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient. They began at the ancient men which were before the house. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass when they were slaying them, and, it, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, will you destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Right, Ezekiel had to go down like, You gonna kill them all? You gonna kill them all? That's how it's gonna look. All right? Grab a Galatians chapter uh, six. Hit Galatians chapter six. Give me verse uh, one. That's how it's gonna look. But what happens is we stand in the way so long, right? And for us, it ain't even a long time. For us, it feels long. For the most I die, it ain't even a long time. But we feel like, man, like I've been righteous. It's long, and it's just feel like nothing changing, nothing different. This thing just getting harder and harder, getting harder and harder to do the right thing. You know what I mean? When that happens, we start to, you know what I'm saying, be tempted. You know what I'm saying? And we do something else. You know what I mean? Step out there a little bit. Then what happens? Right? That put us in the same position as everybody else, just because we couldn't wait on the Most High God. All right? This is Galatians chapter six. Give me verse one. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual will restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering right. yourself, lest you also be tempted. This is why this is why the Christians have an issue with what we teach sometimes. You know what I'm saying? We tell we tell the Christians it's like, no, you gotta stop sinning completely. Alright? And then they read verses like that, like, well, if a man be overtaken in a fault in a fault, restore him. Alright? So they look at that and be like, see, told you that it's impossible to stop sinning. Right, but they're not looking at that thing the correct way. They said restore. He messed up. Right? He didn't stop sinning. Therefore, he has to be restored. Right? Now, from that point on, if he's gonna make it into the kingdom, from the time that he gets restored on, if he's gonna make it into the kingdom, he can't sin. But let's say he do sin again. He has to be restored again. And then from that point on, he, he if he's gonna make it into the kingdom. Like that's that's the part they need to understand. It's like you have to understand that. We're not saying that there's a mark in your life and if you mess up after that life, there's no chance for you. We're saying at some point in your life, you're going to have to make it for the rest of your life without sin. And if you can't do that before you die, then you're going to hell. And you don't know when you die. So you shouldn't play them games. Right? Let's see. Let's keep going. That's your boy. Brethren. Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of the Messiah. Uh -huh. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Mm -hmm. but let every man prove his own work, and then 
shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Mm -hmm. For every man shall bear his own burden. Mm -hmm. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Mm -hmm. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. Mm -hmm. For he that sows to his flesh shall also shall of the flesh reap corruption. Corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Mm -hmm. Ye see how He said, let us do good unto all men, especially unto those who are of the household of faith. Right? Before that, he said, let us not what? Be weary in well-doing. In other words... Don't grow, like, don't, don't, don't get tired of doing the right thing. And that was what he's saying. He said, let us not grow weary in, in well-doing. Don't get tired of doing the right thing. Watch, keep going. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Uh-huh. You see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. Mm -hmm. As many as desire to make a fair show in the faith, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should offer per persecution for the cross of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Mm -hmm. For God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord, Yahushua the Messiah, mm -hmm. by whom the world, is, the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. All right? So you see the story of Abimelech, right? What we was looking at, Abimelech went on to... Roll, you know, rule for those thirty, uh, those three years, right? Wasn't no problems. Evil spirits start coming to his camp, so now his own people start turning against him. So he start going to war with his own people, which spreads the war out to other camps. He's running around. He go to a town, and then it's a tall tower. The whole town locked themselves in the tower, and there was a lady who was at the top, and she just dropped a, a stone right off, cracked him in the head. As the book says, split his brain open. Right? But he is still alive. You know what I'm saying? But it's split him open. And then he is just like, listen, we ain't gonna have, have nobody say that a woman killed him. So he told the boy, he was like, go ahead and slice me open. Right? So the boy went ahead and sliced him through. Because the woman dropped a, dropped a stone on him just by chance. Just like, listen, look, I'm not trying to die today. She just dropped the thing, hit him right square in the head. You know what I'm saying? His butt was done. Right? But that was his end. He went on for a long time. He even won some of the wars. You know what I'm saying? Some of the battles that he had, he even won. You know what that do? Evil spirits coming, everybody turn against you. You kick their butts, though. You still on top. How'd that feel? Yeah, no, think like ain't nothing wrong. Man, ain't nothing. What you talking about? You might even convince yourself, God is on my side. Yeah. Right? And you keep going, keep going, keep going. And then, boom, it's done. You've been building yourself up to the thing. Well, you know what? Well, maybe what I'm doing is okay. Like, maybe God don't have a problem with it. I mean, if God didn't have a problem, why would I win this battle? Mm -hmm. Why would I get this new fancy house? Why would I, you know what I'm saying? Why would I, if God had a problem with it, why wouldn't he just, well, I'll tell you why. Because he gave you over. Mm -hmm. Right? That's how we have to look at this. It all comes down to the book. That's it. Like, am I living righteous or not? I don't care what else is going on around me. Am I living righteous or not? Is brother living righteous or not? If not, you know what I'm saying? Then let's call it what it is. If it is, if he is, then praise the most high God. Right? Praise the most high God. Right? Grab uh what I want. Let's do Judges 10. Let's do Judges chapter 10. It's Judges chapter 10, verse 1. And after Abimelech, there arose to defend Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, mm -hmm. the man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamir and Mount Ephraim. Mm -hmm. And he judged Israel 20 and 3 years and died and was buried in Shamir. All right, so Abimelech is gone. Now you got a bunch of other judges that rise up. Let's hear about them. And after him arose Jair of a Gileadite, mm -hmm. judged Israel 20 and 2 years. Mm -hmm. And he had 30 sons and rode on 30 donkey coats. And they had 30 cities, which he, which are called Haveth Jair unto this day, which mm -hmm. are the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Camon. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Baalim. Mm -hmm. And Ashtoreth 
in the gods of Syria and the gods of Sidon, mm -hmm. and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and forsook the Lord and served not him. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. And that year they vexed, that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel eighteen years, all the children of Israel that were on the other side of Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Baal. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did I not deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and the children of Ammon and from the Philistines, mm -hmm. the Zidonians also? And the Amalekites and the Ma and the Maonites. All right. Look, the Most High God laying it out. Didn't I deliver you from all of these groups? Watch this. You know how we say in the beginning? We say any gift that you may have, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. Right? That's what we say every time we start, right? Watch this. He said, didn't I deliver you from this and deliver you from them and deliver you. Keep going. And the Maonites did oppress you. Mm -hmm. And ye cried to me and I delivered you out of their hand. You said, y'all asked me to deliver you and I did it. I delivered you. What up? Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Mm. That's why I will deliver you no more. Mm. All this good God did for him, that thing worked against him. <laughs> right? I did all this for you and you still forsaken me, huh? Okay. In that case, I ain't going to deliver you no more. All right, let's see. Go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Mm -hmm. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seems good unto you. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. Mm -hmm. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpeh. Mm -hmm. And the people of the, and the princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? Right. He shall Grab. be over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Grab Malachi for me. Malachi chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 1. You have, have to call this blood. But you know for a fact that they put away the mitos, gotta have to have to move forward. And confess their sin. No, forgiving God. Is that what? Uh, Malachi chapter three, verse one. It's Malachi chapter three, verse one. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the prepare the way from before prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, mm -hmm. the messenger of the covenant, mm -hmm. whom you delight in. Mm -hmm. Behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. But who may abide the day of his coming? Mm -hmm. And who shall stand when he appears? Mm -hmm. For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. Mm -hmm. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi. Mm -hmm. And purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. He gonna, he gonna purify the sons of who? Levi. Okay. And he gonna do what? Purge them as gold and silver, and they might offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So if anybody call themselves doing offerings now, I'm just trying to figure out why would he have to do that if we can do them now. Yeah, just like in the just like in the wood, just Moses had to for the air on. Mm -hmm. Only way to do it, you gotta get purified, otherwise that thing is defiled. Alright? These people don't know no law. Alright? They don't pay attention to the darn book. Keep going. Yeah, I hear making tell I'm a, I'm a Levi, I can make sacrifice. Stop that line. You can cut that out. <laughs> Even if you was a Levi boy, no, I don't know that you are. You. you ain't been sanctified. You just came out of your darn mama womb. That's about it. That's the only, the only water you can touch. But just dirt. Alright, keep going. He comes fresh out of Gentile land with all kind of cleanness. Thing. You can just make a sacrifice. They ain't seen God. They ain't heard from him. They ain't touched a prophet. Ain't nobody talked to you Bro, about you God. Know how unclean we are. This you know what I'm saying? You better relax. Don't touch none of God. You gonna touch y'all's sacrifice? Please. We gotta pass under the water. <coughs> man, you better be lucky, the man. You know what I'm saying? The man have mercy on you. This could strike your butt darn down. Yeah. I didn't seen him do it before in the book. Right. All right, let's hear about it. 
Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old, as mm -hmm. in the former years. Mm -hmm. And I will come near to you to judgment and will be a swift witness against the sorcerers mm -hmm. and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling and his wages. He said he's going to be a what witness? A swift witness. In other words, like in the wilderness. as soon as they do something wrong, I'm getting their butt. Mm. Either right now, it's not so. Right now, right now, y'all do it. And you know, three years might go by. You know what I'm saying? Bimelech, he, uh, believe me, he running thing for three years before the evil spirits start coming. Right? That thing might have a delay now. He said, I'm going to be a swift. Oh, you did that? Boom. Right away. Right? People are going to get punished right away. going to be a different world. Let's hear about it. And against those that oppress the hireling and his wages, mm -hmm. the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Mm -hmm. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from, from my ordinances. Watch what you said. And have not kept it. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. But he said, Look, look shall what he we said. Return? Mm -hmm. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. Mm -hmm. But ye say, How have we robbed you? Mm -hmm. In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Mm -hmm. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that ye may be, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be a room enough to receive it. All right? Our people didn't tithe right. All right? When it came to the priest, you know what I'm saying? Our people didn't tithe right. We didn't give it to the priest. We didn't give it to the servants. I mean, to the uh, to the Levites. All right? Keep going. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Mm -hmm. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a, de a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, says the Lord. Yet you say... What have we spoken against you? Mm -hmm. You have said it is vain to serve God. He said, "He said you have said it was vain to serve God. What does that mean? It's empty to serve God. Like, for what? What, we what doing am I doing this for? this for? Don't forget. It. Right? He said, you said, like, what am I doing this for? You know what that, you know what, when a person would come, I mean, I'm being righteous. I'm righteous. I'm, I'm, I'm serving God. I'm serving God. And then all of a sudden I pop up and be like, man, what am I doing this for? What happened at that point? How can we describe what happened? They got wary of doing well doing. Right? That's what Paul was trying to tell us. Like, don't get tired of doing the right thing. Right? But that's what we end up saying. He's like, man, this stuff, you know what I'm saying? What am I doing this for? We got people that, you know what I'm saying, that, that try to have a semblance of serving God, right? You know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily they wouldn't serve God. They go off and try to be Christians. Right? But in their mind, they think, you know what I'm saying, like, that's what I'm trying to do. And then they see something or something happen or they want to go through a challenge. And you know what they do? What am I doing this for? Right? And just give up. They never quite even got there in the first place. Right? But, I mean, they just gave up the search. Just like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. I'm going to just do whatever I want to do. I'm going to live how I want to live. I'm going to go back to cussing. Go back to doing this. All right? Going back to doing all that other stuff. Go back to smoking weed. Or popping pills. Whatever it is people do. All right? I'm going to just go back to it. All right. Let's see. Keep going. Yet you said it is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance, mm -hmm. and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Walk mournfully, right? This is not describing, understand, this is not describing no like, okay, we serve God, therefore we're happy. That's not reality. That's not what we, you know what I'm saying? That's not how, that's not how we set this thing up. We will be happy, for sure. Mm -hmm. but that's not reality. It ain't like this thing gonna come without struggle. You're gonna be unhappy as a sinner. You're probably gonna be unhappy as a righteous person, too. That thing gonna that thing gonna work out both ways. You know what I'm saying? Difference is what you got in the end. Watch what the book say. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Mm -hmm. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Right? We look at them, and we look at these sinners out here. Man, that boy getting money over there. Right? I'm out here serving God. I'm out here broke. That boy over there doing good. He don't care nothing about God. Right? 
He said, man, y'all calling the proud happy. She over there living her best life. Like, it really is. You know what I mean? Like, goodness gracious. I'm over here trying to, you know what I'm saying, keep myself, you know what I'm saying, good. She just, you know what I mean? She over there just looking good for her. We call them the proud happy. We said the sinners are the, what did, what did he say? He said, yeah, they that tempt God are even delivered. These people, these people tempt God. They testing them. And they delivered. They saved. These sinners, right? Going to church and they the ones that saved. We call them the sinners saved. You know, other other places in the book, you know what they call tempting God? When Yahushua, when Yahushua was talking to, to Satan, and Satan was like, you know what I'm saying, why don't you just throw yourself off of this cliff? What did Yahushua call that? So now, if that's dangerous, and I'm saying, well, God loves me anyway, so he gonna save me, right? Is that the same as a Christian saying, Hmm. I mean, technically, I can do whatever I want because of the grace of God. All right? I mean, technically, I can. I mean, God loves everybody, and I'm in His grace, and it's impossible to stop sinning. So, technically, you don't think that's tempting God? It's like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. But guess what? They delivered. They saved. That was delivered me, and they saved. You ask them, and you ask us. A lot of us, we call them. No, that's a save, no, that's a save sanctified woman who on her third husband. <laughs> right? That's I mean she a save sanctified. I mean that's, what you gonna do? <laughs> Alright, let's figure it out. Let's see, keep going. Then they that fear the Lord spoke often one to another. Them that fear the Lord spoke often one to another. And I wonder what they might say to each other. The ones that fear him, the righteous ones, I wonder what they'd say. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. Mm -hmm. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. Mm -hmm. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between mm -hmm. him that serves God and him that serves him not. That's what we look for. He said, them that fear the Lord, they spoke. What? One to another. No, no, no. That's something before that, though. They spoke what? Spoke often one to another. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. All this stuff got a purpose. You get isolated out here, you just get by yourself, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you can tell yourself anything. You can tell yourself anything. That thing easy. You know what I'm saying? You can tell yourself. You get isolated? You just try to pull yourself apart from everybody? Oh, you can tell yourself anything. You start forsaking that, that assembly, right? That's how I know, you know what I'm saying, when certain people don't come to Bible study and all that stuff. Like, I know, it's, that thing don't, that thing, it don't bother me. Talk to me in here, we be talking about it, you know what I'm saying, that thing, it ain't got to bother her. Like, oh, I wonder what this, but I wonder too. But at the same time, I know what's going on, I think, I get it. This thing, this thing ain't an easy life. This thing ain't, you know what I'm saying, how it going to be easy? We full of sin. Full of darn sin and lust and all that thing. That thing ain't supposed to be easy, not for no sinner. You know what I'm saying? You still got that stuff on your mind. You still want to, you know what I'm saying, kind of get out there and cuss and kind of let yourself loose. Hang out with the cool friends and do all that stuff. I get it. No, I get it. Go ahead and go do what you got to do. Get all that out your system. Hopefully, most High God don't turn you over. All right? Hopefully, you get it out your system and you can come on back. Maybe his mind just be like, nah, she good out there. He good out there. You know what I mean? We got some couples in here, but I mean, just real, you know what I'm saying? Just real, like, okay, now this, this is what we've been looking for. They come maybe one, maybe two times, maybe three times. Then they get, you know what I'm saying? They get one of them things, they hit them the wrong way. Because that was going to happen no matter what. The bird going to hit you somewhere. That thing got to hit you now. You can't spend the whole time just going like this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's some good words. You're dodging that thing. But then you got that thing, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then how you going to respond to that thing hitting you? You know what I'm saying? You're going to just kneel down and be like, that was a good one. Right? That was a good one. Or are you gonna be like, oh no, I'm out of here. Right? I'm not or oh, if I'm married, if I've been married before, you mean to tell me this ain't my husband? 
Oh, I mean, no, no. I like, I like what y'all preach and everything, but uh, I just don't. I'm, we not in full agreement. I bet you not. I bet you not. Peace be with you. You do what you need to do. You know what I'm talking about? You do what you need to do. We'll be right here. Right? Because at the end of the day, the truth got to get out. Right? Whether you love it, whether you hate it or not, the truth got to get out. And if you isolate yourself from where that truth is, right, you take yourself away from it, where are you going to get the truth from? Right? You can keep selling yourself, though. I mean, Philip and Terrence are not the only ones that teach the truth. You can keep selling yourself all the time. They not the only ones. There's other people that teach the truth. They can't be the only one. That's true. Yeah, that thing is true. It's impossible that we the only one teaching the truth. That thing is impossible. But if we teaching the truth, why are you going somewhere else? That's what I'm trying to figure out. True. I mean, how many truths you need? I mean, I mean, you teach truth. I need another truth to offset your truth. No, nah, if it's truth, what you need to offset? Now, if we teaching a lie, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do. But if you acknowledge we teach the truth, where else you going then? Why are you going searching hard and why? You ain't even found another truth yet. You like, well, I just know some other truth is out there. Okay. You go, you keep looking then. How you think that how you think that looks to the most high God? You remember when uh you remember the, the Egyptian you I mean the Ethiopian unit came by and then the spirit came and then went over Philip and told Philip, go out there and preach the word and baptize this man. Right? Well, I didn't say baptize, but he said, you know what I'm saying? He said, go ahead and preach the word to him. Right? So he went out, he opened up the book and he explained the book to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, from there, from that, from that passage, he went out, he laid out the whole, whole gospel to him. Right? From Isaiah. You know what I'm saying? He was reading Isaiah. He laid out the whole gospel to him from Isaiah. Right? Imagine, just imagine if the Ethiopian unit would have been like, I mean, yeah, but I mean, I know it's other people out here that, that teach the truth too. It's true. It is other people. How you think God looking at that if he just told his spirit to tell this man to tell you what you need to know so that you can be saved and the only thing you got in your mouth is somebody else can tell me. Oh, okay, for sure. Yeah, well, for sure. You be good. You keep rolling along, Ethiopian unit. You be all right. Right? People make a fool out of yourself. That's what happened. Most high God. You ain't mocking God. You ain't gonna make a fool out of God. God gonna get it together either way. You know what I'm saying? You just got to find out what side you you going to be on. All right? We'll get into chapter, uh, I wanted to get into chapter 11, but we'll get into chapter 11 next week. You know what I'm saying? Talk a little bit about, uh, talk a little bit about uh, another judge that came through. Jephthah. Yeah. Jephthah and some of the things that he did. You know what I'm saying? End up sacrificing his daughter. So we'll kind of, we'll kind of look at how, how that played out. You know what I'm saying? It's real good. I love this one. You know what I'm saying? It's real good. Oh, really? Need to stop talking because I want to get into this thing, but you know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll talk about it next week. That way we can kind of unpack it all. All right? Any questions? Let's pray out.